Our first presenting company is Osiris Therapeutics. Osiris is a regenerative medicine company that sells wound healing product graphics and has partnerships with both Stryker and Arthrex. The company's had a tough couple of quarters here, with Osiris shares down almost 80% from highs of last summer due to some accounting errors in the timing of revenue recognition. I'm joined today by newly minted CEO Dwayne Montgomery. Dwayne, thanks for being here. Thank you. And also uh, CFO Greg Law. So right up front, uh, let's address these accounting problems. Please describe what the issues are and what's been reported so far and what still needs to be done to sort of get this behind us. Okay, so as uh, was reported in our AK uh, last week, we're going back to first quarter of 2014 and restating all of our earnings uh, for uh, the period from first quarter of 2014 through the third quarter of 2015. And that, that whole restatement was based on a deep dive we did as an organization after the initial question came up about uh, revenue recognition around distributor agreements. And uh, what we did is we uh, Took a, took a real close look at all of our distributor agreements. And what, what we came to the conclusion on is that anything that we couldn't verify was actually on a patient or in a patient, we weren't going to recognize revenue on that. So uh, the long and short of it is that we went to a cash basis of accounting uh, for those things. And uh, in terms of the uh, uh, amended filings, we'll be getting those out as soon as possible. Great. And then when do you expect to report the fourth quarter and year-end 2015 results and file the 10K? Well, uh, again, we're, we're still working with uh, BDO to wrap up 14 and the restatements. And as soon as we get through that, uh, we're, we're ready to do that Great. as soon as possible. But um, we need to uh, do those in order. Excellent. And I just want to ask, because in that um, 8K that you mentioned, uh, you know, also reported that you'd received a subpoena from the SEC concerning non-public investigation of historic accounting practices. Right. Just tell us what this is about. Well, any, any time that there's a restatement, um, a material restatement, you can expect that the SEC is going to start asking questions. So uh, that's something that I expected. Um, you know, it's interesting because all this happened right after I became CFO and, and, and just before uh, Dwayne became CEO. Um, so we were, we were, prior to even getting that, we were looking at everything because, again, uh, Dwayne and I have to sign off on things uh, going forward, so I want to make sure that we were comfortable with that, but it's, it's a standard. Great. So with that out of the way, um, I really want to focus on sort of where Osiris is now and where Osiris is going. So, Dwayne, how's the underlying business? Um, you re recently reported that graphics is now covered by 100% of Medicare. 100% of Medicare lives. So what are really the key factors for growth in 2016? Uh, yeah, Ted, I think that, um, well, you know, first off, we want to get this out of the way. We, we want to uh, reestablish credibility with our, our financials. And so that's first and foremost. But without letting that freeze up the business, um, you know, it, it, it's one s skill set to go from zero to 100 million. 100 million plus is a different type of approach. So we're going to make sure that our processes are up to speed and we're doing the right things. Uh, we're going to create a, make sure we have a very entrepreneurial, uh, transparent organization. But in terms of the growth drivers for graphics this year, uh, we're focused on the commercial pay. Um, you probably saw the press release recently around Blue Cross Blue Shield. They took a look at graphics, the clinical uh, compendium there and supported it. Now we still have to work with the local and regional payers to actually convert policies, but um, that, that certainly will be one. We're going to continue to add sales representation uh, where the ROI is there and of course our new products. Uh, Stravix and True Skin, leveraging the relationships we have in the, in the surgery um, arena. So, um, give or take, um, and I, I know you haven't reported fourth quarter yet, but give or take, it was around a 90 plus million dollar business last year, somewhere on that order. Um, and again, not not putting any numbers out there, but that's sort of where the where the business was. Um, graphics is primarily used for diabetic foot ulcers also looking into indications for venous leg ulcers. So how big is that market ultimately? There is some competition out there, but have we even really scratched the treatment of these, of these uh, nasty wounds? No, I don't think. I mean, you're looking at a you know, 450, 500 million dollar market, and the, the percentage of patients that are actually getting treated, uh, obviously we could talk about that. But you know, I think that as an organization, what we do best is R&D and have a 
a really strong clinical department. So I think with that, you know, leveraging those strengths, we can expand in the market. And, uh, and for example, you saw recently the complex wounds study that we just released. I mean, those were 27 patients that you normally exclude from trials, and we were able to reach both the primary and secondary endpoints. And so I think with that kind of um, you know, push and momentum, we can, we can make a, a nice hit with the market. And, and I want to ask one more question on this because I think it's really key to the growth, to understanding the growth opportunity going forward. But we've got the clinical data in place. We've now got reimbursement in place. So what really is it that kind of converts those physicians to treat patients? Is it experience? Do they have to try it a couple times and actually see? And I know that the sales force is on the order of about 100 people today. So is that the right size? Do you actually need more to address this market? We definitely do. Uh, and we, we actually have around 125 reps now, Ted, and we're going to continue to grow that in the right areas as we continue to get more coverage. But it is, it's the clinical background. It's the clinical story. Uh, I think that's what's going to make the difference. Right. Now, you've uh, started a phase three trial for OTI 1501 in preparation for a BLA filing. So how does this product differ from graphics? Maybe you can tell us about that phase three design, trial design and what really is the benefit of seeking a BLA for wound healing? Yeah, so we're taking a look at the BLA strategy overall and, and making sure that those investments are the right, uh, right investment. Uh, so, for, you know, for a BLA, we think that uh, as we work closely with the FDA and we respect the, uh, the regulation changes and guidelines that continue to, to evolve, that the, the, you know, the BLA certainly sets us up for a, um, a change that might happen there. Um, as we continue to look internationally, we think there's some harmonization that can happen among the EU countries. Uh, so we just we think we believe it, it advances uh, you know the the, um, uh, the differentiation of graphics uh, in general. Uh, suffice to say, uh, we're going to you know, watch that very closely. But we're also looking you know past the BLA and as related to our bioengineering uh, uh, portfolio, we think that in conjunction with BLA, our bioengineering products that are coming down the pipeline, we'll do our first IND in Q1 of 2017, that that not only helps us put new products into the current markets we are, but also expand into other, uh, other markets. Great. Um, two products that you guys just introduced, new wound healing products. You mentioned one is Stravix and also True Skin. Maybe you can tell us how these are for sort of initial steps in broadening that wound healing product offering. They are with True Skin. And you know, it's, a, it's all turned to, to fresh. Uh, it's cryopreserved, living, living cells, which is our, which what we believe in. It offers larger sizes that we certainly may not be able to uh, touch with uh, with graphics. We offer two sizes now, and then Stravix is a stronger, higher tensile strength product uh, than than graphics, uh, you know, designed for surgical applications. Okay, great. Now you've also partnered with Stryker for Bio4, which is a bone graft product. Maybe you can tell us about this product, about that relationship with Stryker, and sort of how that launch is going. Well, first off, we really appreciate both uh, Stryker and Arthrex partnerships. Um, I think those partnerships solidify, especially when you're going through an interesting time like we are, to balance out the portfolio and have such um, uh, well-known, very credible organizations like them as a, as a part of the, the, the team is only helped us out. Bio4 is a, the next generation uh, in, in the, the bone allografts offering the angiogenic factors that now can be captured and cryopreserved. Uh, Stryker is doing an amazing job with this product. They were very methodical in how they prepared the launch and they continue to grow it uh, you know, quarter after quarter. Great. And what is the primary indication or where are we seeing Bio4 used most, and how big is that market ultimately? You know, it's uh, certainly it's, it's large, you know, it's a billion dollars, but obviously we, uh, they're, they're using it in uh, their spine, which is I think the growth factor. The uh, trauma, foot and ankle business is right there along with them. Um, and you know, what we're seeing is they continue to leverage their other uh, orthopedics business uh, with this product. So you can continue to see more and more reps uh, being trained, open up new accounts, and uh, again, that's it, it, 
we're really excited about the growth there. And what is what is the primary competitive products today for Bio4? Is it allograft uh, cadaver tissue? Are there other sort of bone morphogenic proteins or things like this? What really is the competition or what comprises that billion dollar, roughly billion dollar market? Yeah, well, certainly Osteocell and Trinity are, are the two major competitors that, uh, you know, that Stryker uh, competes with every day. And uh, you've seen uh, how Nuvasive has done with that product, done, done very well. Um, Bio4 is the next generation of that. And so between the relationships that Stryker has and the um, living cell story that they're telling, that's a great combination. Great. So kind of similar line of questionings with respect to Cartiform and Arthrex, and this may be even a little bit less well-known product, and as I understand it, it's really a cartilage repair product primarily for the knee, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe start out by telling us about that product, and then for some people may not know who Arthrex is, maybe you can tell us a little bit about them and their sports medicine franchise. You know, being a, a privately held company as they are, Arthrex, th there is not a lot known ab about them, but, you know, they're, uh, they're a significantly you know, billion-plus company based out of uh, Naples, Florida, global business. They are the leader in sports medicine. So uh, that partnership uh, also very tremendous for us. Uh, cartilage, our cartiform product is living cellular tissue cartilage that uh, harvested and cryopreserved and implanted, you know, as you said, primarily for sports knee industry. But there are other parts of the body that their surgeons are uh, utilizing that product for. I will say that, again, very methodical launch uh, Arthrex, they don't do things, they don't cut corners. They want to make sure that they have everything in place, they go to the market, and then they continue to support it. Uh, Arthrex, they, I, I've never seen a company uh, emphasize education to their surgeons like they do. Excellent. And can you tell us a little bit about the product? How does it work? Is it, it's, since it's a uh, tissue graft, it's not a two surgery um, or two incision implantation, um, a, a graft and then a, a re-implantation. So how does that sort of compete with some of the other products that are out there? Yeah, so the, it, it, at this time, it's not MIS. Uh, Arthrex is working toward that it is an open seat procedure. Uh, the sizes are 10 and, and 20 millimeters. We're coming out with some different sizes uh, this year. Um, but uh, obviously, the, uh, the damaged tissue is removed, and this is replaced in, in itself. And it's either used with fiber and glue or some stitches to hold in place. And um, it, we, we're hearing, we see um, you know, patients within you know, next day and a few days later, the, the pain is improved. I think the, um, the holy grail of it all, right, is to see how the tissue integration works. And, of course, what patients want to go back in just for a second procedure just to see how that's going. But as, um, as patients now are coming back in for other procedures, we are starting to see some uh, you know, visual views of how it's working, and they're looking good. So you'll, see, you'll start to see some papers coming out around that. Great. Excellent. Greg, I have uh, one other question for you, too. Um, what is the <coughs> excuse me, estimated pro forma cash after the one-time dividend that was paid to shareholders back in uh, the fall? Give or take, where's the cash now, and how long does that last the company? Is there a focus to get the company back to profitability? Yeah, so after the dividend, we had approximately uh, $30 million in cash at that time. Um, you know, we are at the position in our business where we're not burning cash. We're pretty, pretty neutral. Uh, what we're, what we're uh, uh, selling, we're actually, um, uh, or what we're spending in cash, we're actually uh, selling enough to cover the, that cash need. So um, I expect that uh, we're going to come back to profitability pretty quickly. Uh, that's something that, that Dwayne and I are focused on. Um, you know, I, I believe in um, providing a return to shareholders. Um, I know Dwayne believes that same thing. So, you know, as, as, as um, we manage the business, we're, we're managing towards profitability. Excellent. Great. Well, I really appreciate the two of you joining us today. Uh, looking forward to getting the accounting stuff cleared up. I actually think the magnitude of it, you know, about $3 million reported this year out of a $90 million revenue line. It's, it's, I think, been way overblown, so I'm looking forward to get that behind us and really start to understand what the Osiris growth story looks like again. So thanks for being with us here today, and we'll look forward to hearing more about how the company is doing into 2016. Thanks, Dad. Thanks.